Once again, we're back. The Incredibles, the Uncannibal, the Unstoppable, E. Lani, Van, Ilani, V. V. I, tell me, tell me how to do it. I'm going to tell you how you say it in the States, but put some respect on my name. <laughs> so uh, it's Vu Na Ke De. It's tricky. It's very Vu tricky. Vu Na Ke De. Yeah, English speaking background. It's They can't get their head around this, the grasp. The C, C in Fijian is, a, is actually a, pronounced as a TH sound. So Vu Na Ke De. And that's it. That's with Fijian. Vu Na Ke De. Perfect. See, I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to stop right In there. Like three. With yeah, I'm going to stop quick while I'm ahead. Hey, welcome everybody back to another exciting episode, enlightening episode of Bounce TV, where, yo, no matter what happens in your life, you can always bounce back. Now, as always, in keeping with what I theme, you know, about inspiring young people and really all people, but especially young people, you know, we like to have guests on like yourself, Ilani, that, uh, you know, just have really unique stories, um, a story that, that uh, of success. And, and it's ongoing because, like I say, every day we're growing. We're growing. We're trying to get better. Um, yeah, yeah. So at first, I want to thank you, man, for coming on the show. Um, we first met at the Curry uh, launch this year for the new Curry sneaker, the, the Sesame Street sneakers um, down in Melbourne. Um, when I saw you come out there, I thought I thought you were the UFC fighter. <laughs> I did, man, because you got the body of life up here. I wish here, I was the UFC fighter. And I mean, man, I was like going, see, that might, that might, that might. That might be an avenue for you. I mean, because one of the, the, the things that I really, really picked up with you in our conversations after meeting you is that, man, your future's so bright, man. You should wear sunglasses the rest of your life. <laughs> I mean, you just, you know, just so many things innately that I see in you that yeah, that you could do. And, and, and literally, you're the walking epitome of you're just scratching the surface of just the potential and stuff you got. And I just wanted to say that just, uh, right here at the beginning that, you know, it's an honor to kind of be around you. Any, you know, just hearing your story, knowing about you, because I always tell people, if you want to know more about yourself, good or bad, you you learn more about other people. And with that said, just want to start out with you, you know, really resilience, man. You know, I think you and a resilient, a resilient person that, you know, that just like a lot of people, you've had challenges, you know, still deal with probably challenges. Could you kind of tell us a little bit your, your story? How did, how did you, we get to Melbourne yep. um, two Saturdays ago yep. at, at, an, at an event to raise money for Charity Bounce? Uh, and you being one of the celebrities there. <laughs> Uh, you had to explain to me why I think in my own head, like I, I felt that I didn't deserve and I still don't think I deserve a lot of things that I do, but you've helped sort of peel back some of the layers in, in what it is that, that makes the sort of liking towards my character. It's that resilience. It's that will the, I guess the, a lot of people have that fall away from themselves and they, they, they'll look outward to, for, for some sort of motivation in what, mm. what people have done and I, I've been lucky in the sense that I've created my own luck through resilience and and just continually turning up day in, day out and trying to get it done. There, there's, I'm not saying that that character is completely finished yet because yeah. it's still much sh uh, shine and honing that needs to be done. But um, I guess through using the, the physical sort of side of my, my body and in my life, I've been lucky enough to achieve a, a lot of cool things in, uh, in, in not, not that long a period of time. So... Um, some things did take longer than I than I would have liked to, but just just showing up and and being resilient and turning up day after day, getting through that grind has uh, has allowed me to to go on and pursue or go on and and achieve some some pretty cool sort of little milestones. I've been lucky enough to play uh, represent the, the great country of Fiji, my father's my father's heritage. Um, also, was lucky enough to to play rugby league professionally and represent uh, the great club, the Sydney Roosters, one of the sort of mm. most prestigious. That's right. Um, teams in the in the one of the hardest competitions of of, uh, of of sort of any ball sports in the world. It's you have to be physically strong, mentally strong, um, super resilient to play the game. Even we stand like sort of ten minutes on the field in that in that sport. Um, 
I've been lucky enough to to also compete on a on a on a on the TV like transition out of the the professional sporting world into onto the the TV sort of arena, which is its own sort of beast. And yeah, uh, I, I guess me me lifting weights and and uh, stems back from from when I was a kid. I was a a fourteen year old kid and, and liked the look of your types of your Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and those kind of big muscly guys. My my dad's a, a big strong man himself, so I was like, oh, okay, how do I how do I become something like that? Um, and I was like, at the time, my, my mum remarried when I was when I was thirteen to a guy who uh, his, his name's Andy. He's my, my stepdad, one of my best mates now. But he uh, he's he's quadriplegic and uh, he's he's in a wheelchair. So the way I the way I, my approach to life is now is if he could get up and walk for for ten minutes of a day, he would he would use every single second of that of that time that he possibly could to 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 maximize what he could out of that time. So. For me, with my body, I feel like I'm doing him a disservice if I'm not using my time mm, to, to better myself that's good. and up myself and, and level up my, my, my character that I, that I am physically. And now more so, it has to, it has to be a mental game for me because that's an area where I, I still feel i got much, much more potential and growth. So um, most of the things I ever did in terms of pushing my body to, to the absolute limit um, came from... Well, one of two things. My my dad is a very big, strong and the big big strong man. Came from Fiji with sixty dollars in his pocket and and worked mm. his worked his way up. <laughs> played played rugby union till I was about forty five. So I said, if he can keep playing forever, then I'll try for as long as I can. And then I had when I met my stepdad, I I sort of made myself that I sort of told myself in my mind, if he could just walk for ten minutes or do anything yeah. put in a ten minute space of yeah. time, he'd do it. And I'd be doing him a disservice if I wasn't using my my body to, for, for the betterment of myself. And now I guess it's good in a way because others can use that as inspiration for whatever challenges they're going through and can say, well, if he did it, why can't I? Well, and again, tremendous, tremendous story. Some of y'all probably, like I said, know him from television, probably more maybe because of uh, um, uh, Australian Ninja Warrior. Yep. You know, that because I've watched that show too. So, you know, it's a test of your physical endurance. It's a test mentally as you navigate through that competition. What are some of the things you do to prepare? I know physically you, you the weights and everything, but it, also if there's some mental things that you do to prepare for that type yeah, yeah. of competition, and you've been doing it for a while now, so I know what are, what are some of your techniques uh, uh, as you approach um, that 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 competition. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Great question. Um, I learnt about or I, the club that I played at when I played professional rugby league was was Sydney Roosters. We were very lucky in that we had a really good coach in Trent Robinson. He's still there now. Um, he taught us so many good little little hacks and techniques of the game. Uh, once, sorry, I was I was going to touch on stuff with Kobe. It was, it was just about using visual, visualization. I, oh, okay. Yeah, just I do that. I, I know Michael Jordan did it. I know yeah. Kobe did. It, I know. Yeah. Ray Lewis did it. I know all, all the greats of any sport. They all do it, and it's it's weird. Your brain cannot tell the difference between a an imagined rep and an actually mm -hmm. physically done rep. So mm -hmm. I think you, you're selling yourself a you're selling yourself short if you are not doing it. Because like I said, the brain can't see the difference between actually having done it or an imagined rep. So do it. And you can you can you can go to so many strange places in. And just even seeing yourself at the finish line, winning, having conquered whatever it is you have to conquer. Um, yeah, visual, visualization is probably up there on the, the top of the list for, for for at least mental preparation. So wow, I'm sure there's a couple others yeah. in my mind, but I can't. Think yeah, right well, now. We'll, 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 we'll get them we'll, out. Get, we'll get them. We'll get them out. Let me, let me get let me get you the part that most people probably deal with you know i mean i'm sure people see you and they know your story and they you know they see success success you 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 know like i said you you in a couple of different areas doing different things from the roosters to television different stuff um what does failure mean to you i mean what does if if anything what does failure mean to you Uh, failure for me, it's an opportunity to grow. And mm. <clears throat> look, it, I I hate failure, but also I'm appreciative of the lesson. And when I look back, I think all those little failures were the ones that 
make you appreciate the wins so much more. But it just makes it just makes. Look, I'm, I'm a what's the what's the word? It's a negative. Um, it's someone who's negative. I was speaking that the other day. Oh, oh, negative. cynical, pessimistic. No, 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 no. no optimistic. I'm, I'm someone who's negatively driven. There's a word. There's a, it's a mental type of. You driven by negative. If you tell me I'm not good enough, then I'll prove you. Oh wrong. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh that, well, that's me. Uh, yeah. Negative reinforcement. Oh. I think that's what it is. I don't know. I just called it my daddy. Okay. My daddy would just say, "Y'all, he would have to do is say, uh, oh, he ain't not gonna do that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. too much for him. He's too lazy. That's me. He's too lazy. Yeah. You know, he won't put the work in. He won't commit. Yeah. And it was like he was just great psychologist. Yeah. And now I, I don't know. Maybe I've given him too much credit, yeah. but I thought after a while that he knew the best way to get me to do stuff was not saying, oh, he can do it. He's <laughs> capable. Yeah. He's really, really good. He's naturally gifted at that. Unfortunately for me, most of the time, I don't really do that well with that. I, Like you said, operating from that deficit, that mental deficit, yeah, yeah. where you know they're doubting you. Them haters is hating. Yeah. They, 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 they on 100% on you out here. And that drives you. Mm-hmm. That forces you to lock in because you don't want them to be right. Yeah. You don't ever want them to be right. Never, so, yeah, no I, I get that, you know. Hey, what's an example? Do you got an example of what we're talking about right now? Like a story or example? Uh, it, it'd just probably be old coaches of mine, and they would say things like, no, nah, you can't do that. You never make it. Not you'll never, but just word it in a way to, to soften the blow that, look, not everyone can do this. And I actually rang him. I actually rang that coach uh, probably a year or so after I played in the NRL. I, I was actually the oldest ever player to, to play yeah, in Yeah, I was getting ready to you bring that out. Sorry, I jumped, I jumped the gun on you there. I was actually at uh, at one point. I actually was, uh, I don't think surpassed is the word, but I was overtaken by one of my good mates who I grew up with and he actually um, then became the oldest. And there's actually another guy who's gone on to to become the oldest. Uh, that's not, look, that's not anything to really brag about. But, but you what it does show is it does no. exactly right. It's I don't want to brag about because I did mention it to one of the young guys and one of the young guys was like, is that something that you actually should celebrate? And I think, yes, it is because the door's not shut. In our sport that I played, twenty, it's deemed to be, say, 22, 23. If you haven't made it by then, the, the experts say, no, nah, no, nah, mate, just pick a new career because that's, that's, that's done. But for me, that was sort of, I got to, I got to experience living overseas at, at that age. Um, and a whole new world opened up for me in that regard. And I guess it's made, it's made a, it's made a cool story, but it's turned me into this, I don't know, something different, something that's. Yeah. You don't think like people that think that 28 years old is too old to, to go on and play in the NRL, they, you know, to start your career that late, they, that what they call conventional wisdom, mm. you know, but you're the uncommon man. But as the poem goes, the, nothing ever changes until the uncommon man comes along. Mm-hmm. The unreasonable man comes yeah, along. For sure. he, I didn't even he, know that, but that's yeah, a cool saying about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. When, when they come along and you say, hey, you know, it's the Wright brothers saying, hey, man was meant to fly. Mm-hmm. So we're going to dedicate our time, our money, our energy, you know, to do that. Now, I think, I think that the fact that you – Became at 28, what the oldest guy to ever do that, what you did to play in the NRL, to start your career heading that way. I think it liberates, it gives other people that are at that age right now. Somebody's watching this right now, and they've been told constantly they're too old to start this. Oh, you do this when you're 17 or 18. Yeah. That's when everybody does that to get to that. And you didn't. You didn't let that. You didn't let that confine you. You didn't let that stop you. And that's why I really wanted you on the show because, man, if you sit down with him and have a cup of coffee or whatever, you see and feel that that whole energy that is really not too much of anything that if you put your mind to it, that you you um, you you couldn't do. 
I love what you said about visualization and being able to see it and everything. It made me think of a story, an interview of Larry Bird, a famous NBA basketball player, who when they asked him the question, now Larry's a white guy in America, a uh, white guy, and in, in, the, in the interviewer said, why do we not see more Larry Birds today in the NBA? Why did we not see home, that many homegrown white guys mm dominating like you dominated in the NBA. And he said because when they turn the TV on, they don't see themselves mm -hmm. out there doing that. And is it really kind of a play on what you just said, that, you know, if you can see it, you can be it. You can become it. I'm not sure what the – there was a – Mark Wahlberg played a character in a movie. And oh, he, yeah, Vince yeah. Rapallo. Invincible, yeah, is that it? Invi I, it was, uh, Invi was it Invincible, the one he got, he got drafted real late? That he was he, playing American football. Yeah. He was non-drafted, and he walked on. Yeah. He was a bartender yeah. in Philadelphia, and he walked on. They had, like, the coach got mad with the team, open track, like you. Well, that, he was, that was too that old. Was his freshman. Like, I, he I, was too old. I didn't watch the movie, but I know the story, and I said, well, why not, why not me? I remember driving to training, listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger on a – he's got this real cool motivation. I love Arnold. Um Song where someone put in put some Hans Zimmer music over the top of it, so I just this emotional. I would just be on my way to work at four in the morning, just crying my eyes out, thinking if we can get this, this is it. This is like all the all the hours would have been worth it. I was getting four hours sleep a night. I was working full time. I had a baby on the way. I had two kids at home already with my wife, and I knew I was going to work six hours to then drive straight to training, train another eight hours for that day. And I thought, look, it, at some point, this would be some cool story somewhere for someone to see and take some inspiration from. When I was 20, uh, when I was eight, uh, 18 and I first went into the sort of, prof not prof it was like semi-professional world of sport, I always wrote on my hand, FFM, everything I did for was for, for my friends, for my family, and lastly for myself. I wanted to outwardly put that energy out there. I love that. Say that again. I always wrote on my hand, FFM. It was always for my friends, mainly my friends who didn't get the opportunities that I got. Ooh, that's good. And for my family, who mm. who supported me the whole way through, and then mm. lastly for myself, I always try to put it out there for others. I think I still embody and live that now. That's why I push so hard in things I that I do it. because I want someone to see something that I do and, and take something away from that and apply mm. that to themselves and and grow. I, I've been lucky enough to have lots of inspirational figures around me, so why not try and be on myself? And I think everyone can do that. Ooh, that's gospel right there, y'all. He preaching up in here. That's that's definitely, and see again, why I wanted you on the show. Um, I mean, one of the things that me and you, when we were talking, I, I was saying, like, hey, what's the future looking like for you? I mean, I said, do you realize, do you realize the potential that you have in so, in so many different things, so many different levels. And not only do you realize that potential, you know, what do you want to do to start moving towards that? Mm -hmm. How do you, what does that look like? How, that, you know, because you, 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 I know you, you, you just like most successful people, you have a process of what you do and how you do it. And now watch how I segue my favorite part of what you told me the other day. You know, I got a, a lot of Tracy, extra Tracy I done put it on. I really, really loved me a lot. So I, I put on a little bit more Tracy than I did when I played. And I was yeah, talking. you're aware of it, then that's okay. Yeah, yeah, but I've been aware of it for a long time yeah, now. that's when you got to start making the moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to start making the moves to do it. Um, Dom. A Dom is one of the good kids in the, our program, and I coach now. That uh, get it done. Yeah. That he said, "Yo, get that done." Now, you said something to me. I was asking you about diet. Yep. And he's getting ready. To say, I'm going to tell you what he told me, but let me just say, I not I not only got out of got something out of what he said, but I also heard the discipline in what he was saying. I said. I asked him about a protein, like a recovery protein, to take after I work out and do weights or any type of resistance training. And I said, do you got any suggestions? And you said, you, you told me about this energy drink, this protein drink called, uh, this is where you get that plug in. Oh, from it, Body Science. Yeah, yeah, Body Science. Body, body Science, science. Yeah. looked yeah. after me very well yeah, for yeah, a very yeah. long give, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give Body Science. Shout out to Body Science yeah, out yeah. there. Oh, well, they... 
they looked after us. Actually, I, I, I started working with Body Science after I was with the NRL, but they looked after all the clubs that I was with when I was playing rugby league. And mm. I think you can um, – I don't know if – I don't know if many of the, the people who listen to this uh, have watched much rugby league, but if you look at all the Fijian boys, when they come out of Fiji, then they're, they're, very, they're very lean, but when they, they leave or move on from rugby league or while they're at their peak in rugby league, you look at the muscle mass that these mm. guys have. These guys are like some sort of a super saiyan or literally chiseled out of granite. The, the Roman sculptures would base all their work off of these guys' mm. bodies. And when they get this right amount of protein in from, from I mean, body science um from the clubs that i was at it helped add to on top of really good nutrition it just added the, added the little extra one percent to help create these not only great athletes but like aesthetically pleasing good looking bodies wow. and it's something to base yourself off and and strive towards and those little those little one percent parts of your food will help you get i don't know who knows where it'll take it'll take you far yeah, I'm sure when your body is healthy, your health is your real wealth. And I don't know, I was I was just counting a little bit. That was about at least uh, nine by name drops for body science. So body <laughs> science, if you want to show your appreciation, please go to charitybounce.org and make a donation, you know, to help impact young people around the world. Just Pierre but, and uh, Greg, thank you. Yeah, Pierre and Greg, yes, yes. Now... You said, this is what you told me, and I like, you know, sometimes people tell you things, you know, you don't need to write it down because you know it was burnt on the plastic cells of your brain <laughs> and you knew you had it. And, you know, I was asking you in our conversation, what, give me a suggestion of what I can use to, you know, recover, let my, help my muscles to recover, some type of protein type situation. You told me about body science, um, that's 10, and, um, you and I and the first thing I ask, which should tell you, I was a little reluctant. I'm still in that reluctant space, it's a little bit anyway. We're always growing, man. We're always, yeah. we're, there's always opportunities for us to grow. If you're not growing, you're dying. So there always you go. Find a way to grow every day. You stay, yeah. And you and you, I said, how does it taste? Do it taste good? <laughs> and I was like, the you know, man. yeah. And I and you looked at me, like I said, nobody's ever said that. Like the way you said, I'm gonna say it, and I want you to tell, look at me and say it the way you said it. I said, yo, but yo, I need to know how. how well, how does it taste? I mean, I know you drink it, but how does it taste? <laughs> I think I said something on the lines of, eat for function, not for taste. Reason being, the foods are changed in a way to to work negatively against your brain's chemistry. Your body will respond to taste or smell, and in in a sweet sense and it's it's geared for survival but there's so much abundance of food around us now that we just over consume we, we eat way too many calories we're not fueling ourselves first and then look, a little bit of sugar okay here and there but just try to avoid it whenever you can eat for function over taste it's yeah i think i've said enough eat. just eat for function over taste fuel optimally fuel your body as best you can with First of all, real sources of protein, if you can if you can tolerate that. This is no dietary advice. Just also, just I have yeah. to say that as a as no. But disclaimer. when you can, yeah, a little disclaimer there. Um, yeah, eat for function, not for taste. Fuel the body with what it needs. It needs protein and fat to to run optimally, and then you can add on stuff from there depending on if it suits your your needs and requirements for for your lifestyle. Athletically, I can afford to eat extra carbohydrates. I'm probably ranting here. I know. Let's just leave it at function, no, 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 no. Not taste. No, I want. I, mean, you, I know to you get probably that. have some basketball, young basketball kids. Yeah. You want to optimally fuel for what your body's requirements are. Absolutely. Add carbohydrates when you need to, and you are an athlete. Add sorry, add extra carbohydrates, but try to sort of avoid excess amount of carbohydrates. Ultimately, fuel with good fat sources and good protein sources. Red meat, chicken, and you when you when you can. But yeah, look for red meat first and organs. Organ meat, organ meat's really good too. It's on the most wow. nutrient dense food. On like the like like chicken gizzards and livers. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Livers. Yeah. livers. I love great. that stuff, man. Raw liver, raw liver's great. Raw what? Yeah, raw liver. Yeah, I only just started started that. That's fried meats. Raw liver. liver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you just fried, there, fried meats. You fried just meats look after me with the. Big five kilo cow liver. 
Prime meats, prime meats, shouting out pride, prime, pride, meats. Pride, pride, pride meats, pride meats, pride meats, P R I D E, P R Y D E, P R Y. Oh, I know, I know, right there. <laughs> yeah, right, that's right. right. Uh, in uh, in top right, top right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pride meats. Man on the yeah, yeah. Charitybounce dot dot o r g. Yep. Um, we appreciate the love. Yo, raw liver. Yeah, yeah. Most nutrient dense food on the planet. Now you really just went there with that whole eat. For functionality over taste. Well, actually, I, I lie a little bit there, just a fraction. It's act, raw liver actually tastes a little bit better than than overcooked liver. It's weird. I don't I, don't ask me why. You know like, the difference. Like you go to Pride Meats, they give you raw chicken livers or beef I go, livers. I go beef livers. Yeah, I'd probably, beef I'd, livers. Yeah, I actually heard this thing the other day. This guy called Raw Meat Experiment. He's gone seventy five days straight of eating at least one to two meals a day, just raw. Uncooked meat. Look, Isn't this, that like this is getting nice? extreme? This is getting extreme. Well, that's what I thought. But this guy's still alive and he's not dead and he's actually thriving health wise. So, wow. Yeah, something different. Something, we that's, that's, something this different is really completely day. tangential. But L- learn, you learn something different. Hey, maybe we could, it could be a step. The, the, the beauty I like behind that, I'm someone who, because of all the things that I do, I'm pretty time poor. So I'm like to myself, hmm, if I can save myself 20 minutes on cooking mints or half an hour on cooking mints that means i could train in the gym for half an hour more or i could do half an hour of sprints hill sprints or something like you know better channel my my time for for something that's going to make me stronger bigger more powerful you know wow oh, that, that's the reason why i like that that that, that sort of that little hack the better better use of time Raw. Uh, i don't know if it's going to yeah. taste all that great but like i said function over taste and this guy's not dying, so look, I'm I'm not advocating for everyone to go and just start eating raw meat. It's just a, just a thought, just a thought I had. So, and he's but you have eaten a raw liver, though. I I wouldn't say a whole liver. I had a sliver of it, and the plan is to start start consuming it raw. There's old. We need to like wow. science truths always ring true. That the the true science will always represent itself. There's old uh, like farmers' wives like remedies. Of, of using like ground up raw liver um, as like ailments and oh sorry is ailments is the word uh, t- for fixing like yeah, issues right. yeah. yeah yeah so Physical I mean age. I think we can look back to, sometimes you got to go back to go forward like I think we can look back to to older diets and I I, I know like organ meat is only sort of re refreshing itself now yeah. but I know into like in terms of genetics and epigenetics and how we got to where we are to be on this on the earth in this present time is our parents and grandparents and great, great grandparents must have ate well or as well as they possibly could to put themselves in the best stead mm-hmm. that they can to have a, a great and strong next generation. So, Absolutely. So they must have done something right back then. And I feel like we may have gone off track from, from what the good things that they were eating. Um, so yeah, eat for function. I, I guess they would have done it because they, the food was scarce. Mm. Yeah, and and like I said, we here now, so that means that it worked because they made it. That's you right. know, That's right. they came before us. I want to, as you know, it's one of the questions I ask most times to people. You know, I like kind of springing it on them. You know, um, I know um, Caleb probably sent you some questions and stuff, but I just kind of use that to frame it up, <laughs> and um, and I then I just try to go with the flow. But um, what are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? Nothing. Maybe I'm afraid of. I get a bit of vertigo in heights and stuff like that. Um, but I, I know I know where you're going with the question. But I don't. <clears throat> I, I don't think I have a specific answer for you. I, well, that's the right answer if you don't have one. I I, I have things that I worry about, but I wouldn't say there's anything that I'm necessarily afraid of. Like, I guess I guess, well, I guess maybe maybe death. I, I I you know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid of. Injuring myself, but I know the risk, more often than not, is is worth the reward. So mm-hmm. I do get anxious and scared if I do injure myself. But the, the weird thing for me is whenever I'm injured, that tends to be the time when I train the hardest and I actually end up way better off in the long run. So I'm like, the injuries were actually a stepping stone to the next thing. So it's it's weird. It's this weird little cycle and process where I actually level up and walk out of the injury better than when I walked into it. It's almost like all my focus doubles down completely, and I 
maybe I'm maybe I'm just not applying myself fully all the time. <laughs> well, I well I think you apply yourself. You know, like I'm still definitely on that visualization thing, and how you said you approach your competitions with the Roosters as well as uh, um, Australian Ninja Warrior competition. You know, th that that ability to mentally, you know, be in the moment, understanding, you know, I, I always say slowing down the mechanism mm. so you can fully comprehend what's going on around you and have a full, clear, clear concise uh, thoughts about how you're going to, you know, respond mm. to, to, um, to, to what's happening around you. Um, but yeah, that's the right answer. I mean, the answer is whatever you said. It could be I don't have one or I can't think of anything. I don't know. Um, I, I, what, what I want as a follow-up, I would have to say. Go ahead. I think I just okay. You go, all right. Give it to me. I had it now. Um, maybe like what you said, like not living up to your full potential. I guess there you that, go. That, that sort of scares me now. Yeah. I'm like, hang on. I've, I've been lucky enough. Well, I've created my own, my own luck to achieve this, this, and this. But ever since we had our conversation last week, I've had it in the back of my mind, like, well, how far can we push this? What mm. If I can just move one piece into this position and can that send another domino, um, like a, another pile of dominoes falling, tumbling somewhere else? So that, that scares me. That scares me that if I don't sort of reach my full potential. Yeah. And, and and like I said, that's 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 a great answer because it's your answer. I think that we all walking books or uh living epistles, I like to say, and that people can read us. Just mm -hmm. like you see a person, you read them by their expressions and stuff. I always say I want to live a life that inspires other people to live life. I want to live so big, I want to live so out loud that it inspires others to do that. I want to live a life that people that are risk rather than rust. I want to live a life that people right. will venture instead of vegetate mm -hmm. and just kind of stay stagnant. You know I mean, I don't want I don't want people to play it safe. And I don't mean in the negative way. I don't mean in a negative light. Let me just just say that part. But I think that you know, you can live I, if you live your truth or you go after your passion, go after your passions. And that's what I really picked up with you is that when you feel like this is something, you want to do something, you you have an ability to just throw yourself into it wholly. Well, a lot of us, and I, and I don't see you as a person that's easily distracted once you lock in on a thing. <clears throat> is that true? Did I read that right? Yeah, that's it's pretty true, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I think I'm sorry. I, I I'm thinking of myself in other areas of life, but if like exactly what you said, when that's the thing that I really want to go after, yeah, you can't distract me from that. You can't. I'm constantly thinking. That's we're constantly locked onto it. If I have to sleep for it, I have to eat for it. Then it's 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 there in my head. I'm like just we have got Ninja Warrior coming up. I'm hoping just <laughs> depend. It, it's dependent on the gods that control TV land. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in that competition, I'm in that competition to win it. I'm I'm chasing it. I'm going to win it this season if I if I'm lucky enough to get on there. So and it's just hone in and hunt down that goal like it's it's your last meal you'll ever eat on this planet. You got to chase that thing like it's like if you if you don't eat that you will die. Like I think that's the, wow. your, your best approach to, to things like you that. You need it. You got to look. No, you need that. You got to be hungry for that. Yeah, I'm I'm always telling those kids. I said when I would walk in with that hunger. When I really had that hunger, on top of preparing, mm. yeah, you got to prepare, you know. But then you add that hunger to it. Yeah. That really, you know, it's hard to beat that. Mm. You, what do you think? It's hard to beat that. It's hard. I, I'm thinking it's almost impossible yeah. to to beat a person who uh, has guaranteed not to quit. Yeah. They 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 said this is this will be it. I, I'll do this thing. And part of the time, you might just need an example of that. I I listen to lots of cool motivational videos. And one of the, like, it's weird. I was a, when I first heard, it, I thought, "Who is this?" And what was he talking about? I, I didn't recognize his voice at first. And then I, 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 I figured it was Will Smith. And Will Smith was talking about running on a tr treadmill. 
And I don't oh, know yeah, why, yeah, I, don't I know, know that one. Go ahead, go ahead, tell it. And Will Smith was like, I don't care who you are, what you do, but if, if you want to challenge me to something and, and it ends up being like, if we run next to each other on a treadmill, I'm either going to die or I think he said, you're getting off first or I'm going to die yeah. trying to be. Like that's yeah. how invested you have to be Ooh. in wanting to, to win and succeed. Mm. If you can do that, you it will take you so, so far. Like it's, and it's literally like the world is your, the world is like anything could happen. Like, Is it really that clear in your head though? When you lock in on something that is not done to you, for any, to you do it. I mean, is it that clear? Because I really want it you is that to clear. Tell me. I, I've just I've got family, I've got work commitments that I have to. Oh, okay. That I have okay. to also be okay. well aware and, and present of. I'm lucky my wife tells me if I'm letting that that path of things distract me too much from from family life, which you have to be wholeheartedly committed to and aware of as well because your kids only get one child or you have mm. to make sure you're there for all that and, and help guide them on that path. So that's my only real distraction distraction away from that. Okay. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, because like I said, you do, I've always kind of picked, I picked up that intensity from you that you have. And, um, and I understand that, you know, even in my life, that's what you need. That's one of the main ingredients yeah. to yeah. get grandma's sugar cake. You got to have those ingredients, the, um, those main ones, to be able to do that. Now, if there was one thing, if there was one thing that you could ask somebody who you've looked up to, whether they're somebody you have met or somebody you haven't met, um, or somebody did, you know, Right, you know, right now. You know, for example, for me, my question is always for somebody, if I was able to meet one of my heroes or whatever, is I have a lot of questions, but my main question would be, why didn't you quit? Why didn't you give up? And normally I don't even say the why didn't you give up part. Because once I look them in the eye and say, why didn't you quit? I know right then they go somewhere in their mind, in, in a personal place. It was some defining moment or a defining circumstance or whatever mm -hmm. that galvanized them, that 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 forged that that drive out. Ray Lewis um, talks about it. It's yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. It's that moment. It's that you know, in your, like you can look back in your life and yeah. say, "What's that one thing? That one moment?" Yeah. I think he says life is about moments, but he's like, yeah. But there's a moment. Think, there's a moment. There's a specifically a yeah. moment. For me, it was watching Fiji in 2003 lose a World Cup semi final. And I said to myself that day, one day I'm going to represent Fiji. And that changed my whole outlook on wow. actually my life. My dad's Fijian. Fijians are very passionate about rugby union. Wow. And I, <laughs> funnily enough, I actually played my first ever NRL game on the same field that that game was held on when they. Wow. Had. I actually, I took a moment like when I when I I played my sort of last game before I had to retire because of concussions. I actually went to the it was a, the last ever game that was at that field before they demolished mm -hmm. the stadium, and I, I actually walked out to the spot and I just said thank you. I, I don't know how and why the 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 well, well I do know I, I basically forced that that to time manifest my life into yeah. existence. Yeah, I, I manifested it, and uh, it was just a surreal thing looking back on the what was it. Uh, 16 years since the, uh, no, sorry, three, two, three, two, 2018, yeah, 12 years from between moments, but the path that I traveled in that time had me represent Fiji on 15 occasions, I think, I think more, sorry, um, represent one of the, 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 the best clubs in the world and one of the toughest sports in the world, just through dedication to a, a promise I made to myself as a kid. Mm. I mean, genetically it was, it was inbuilt into me as well through, through my dad and out of my Fijian sort of genetics. And um, yeah, looking back, I'm just, just thankful for that moment in particular. It's, yeah. I remember I, ran, I spoke to my friend like crying, my, 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 my best girlmate at the time. And I was so I was just so upset and so sad. And I said, "No, nah, one day I'm gonna play. For, I'm gonna represent that country." And uh, yeah, I was lucky and you did. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I created that in my in my mind. 
Dreams do come true, That's y'all. Right. That's right. I mean, this is, a, this is in the flesh, living testimony, where he has a kid. He made that decision. Yeah, he made a decision, and he then he put legs under it and just kept working towards that, and he accomplished it. Now, I, I find your life, I find you really, really inspirational. As you said, when you first came, we first started, you said, I want people to, to look at me and feel like, hey, I can do mine too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we don't, we're not set up right now to, to take questions, but I'm sure a lot of our kids and whoever else is listening, they got questions too. How can they reach you? How do I mean? I know you, the uh, Australian Ninja Warriors coming up. Make sure you lock it in. Be looking for Lonnie on there. Look for him. Just look for the yeah. big one of the effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With that fro action working. How do they reach you? What if it's in so, social media, whatever? How do they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, follow my, you on your social. Tell us all of that right now. Yeah, cool. My my, my main social that I use is uh, is just Instagram, and that's just my name, Elon yeah. Vinikeda. Or you can search up Thanos. Thanos, on, that's on, a, Thanos yeah. on Instagram. Yes. I stole that a few years ago. So it's I'm that and how did how it's just Eloni Vinica, they're just my name. E L O N I. Just type that in and I'm I'm the first one on there. Okay. So um and hey, any questions by any kids, ask ask. But the main reason why I stayed involved with my sport, I, I coach rugby league now, was was to help that next generation. And if I can help them in in any way be better through using some of the tools that I mm. I learned to use and apply, then I'm mm. more than happy to help out. I, in the last week, I've helped two or three young kids who just reached out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I like the fact that you can reach out through social media yeah. now to reach out to your to an idol or a star or someone who, me as a kid, I love looking up to Fijian players, but I couldn't reach out to those guys. Whereas yeah. now, I actually talk to the guys, or sometimes they've reached reached out to me yeah. because they they've seen my story and think yeah. it's really cool. And I, that's humbling in itself to yeah. to hear that and and see that they took something out of my story of which they played a, a big part. So social media, I love how social media in that regard breaks down that, that barrier. And I mean, if you could, if you were a kid and were able to get just a couple of words of encouragement from your, your mentor, uh, sorry, some, a, a hero, a hero. Man, yeah. that could take you so, so far in life. So just, yeah, please kids out there, reach out. I'm, I'm happy to, happy to help out in whatever capacity I can and uh, offer some words of encouragement or wisdom. So well, look, reach out. There you go. I mean, Lonnie, I know me and you as friends, we're going to continue this conversation. Yeah. Definitely going to get you back because I know it's just the beginning for you. I always, I told him the other day, I said, man, it's just the tip of the iceberg of what you're doing right now. I think that you're going to be able to impact so many millions and millions of people around the world um, on what you're doing because, one, because your heart's in the right place. You, you, you really, really doing it. I, like I said, I won't forget again, FFM, uh, a friend, family, friends, and then yourself. You know that myself. That's the M. I always, so, I, yeah, the order for that was always just mainly for, for for my friends, like the friends who didn't get the opportunities that I got. And I wow. think outwardly doing it that way, just I know looking back makes it more rewarding because they were all there to support me in the end. But I really, I was doing it for them. I didn't really care about myself. I I had friends who didn't get the opportunities that I got, I, and I thought to myself, I'd always be doing them a disservice if I didn't push my body as hard as I possibly could every day. Wow. So I hope someone can take something of that and well, use that to, to, to level themselves up for everyone else. Well, we have, I'm sure, especially a lot of the kids in our program, but as well as all the others that watch this. Man, I want to thank you for coming on, bring your, your time. I saw you brought your um, skateboard in here. You know, um, that might be something after I drop maybe about 50 kilos well, not that much, many kilos. Well, if I drop about 40 kilos, I'm going to have to get out there with you and do it because, again, for no other reasons, because you inspire me. I know he inspired you. You got that information. Yo, reach out to him. I mean, this is one of the best brothers in the world, man. I mean, every time you know I've been around him, I've always felt like you know he's a resource. Not just a friend, but he's a resource too. Just great knowledge, great information. Again, we want to thank you um, for coming to, on Bounce TV. And we want to close, as we always do, is that, hey, Bounce Life. It's more than an organization. It's greater than any movement. It's a lifestyle. And any time that life hits you hard and sometimes even knocks you down, we want you to know here from Bounce TV, 
you can always, I mean always, bounce back. Thank you. See you next time. Same bounce time, same bounce place. Peace. We out.